So in the previous video, we've looked at this equation here. We've seen that pressure varies based on the depth of the fluid that you're in. Okay, so if you are in water, um, the lower down you go in the water, the more pressure you will experience. Now this effect also gives rise to the force of upthrust. Yeah, so you know that upthrust is is caused by something when it is is caused by an object being submerged in a fluid. Yeah, so you get upthrust on a helium balloon, for example pushing the balloon upwards in the atmosphere, or you've got upthrust on a boat floating in the water, causing it to float in the water. Um, so this, I'm going to use this example here. So this orange ball in this fluid is going to experience some pressure, yeah? But the pressure at the bottom is going to be greater than the pressure at the top because the bottom is deeper in the water than the top is, yeah? So there's going to be a lot of pressure on the bottom and then less pressure on the top. And it's this pressure differential that causes the 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 the, uh, the force of upthrust. Yeah. So more pressure on the bottom, less pressure on the top, and that is going to cause upthrust. Okay. So upthrust is caused when there's more pressure at the bottom and less pressure at the top, and that's just that fact just occurs because the deeper you go in a liquid, the more uh, the more pressure you feel. Okay. Right, so if you want to work out the magnitude of upthrust, all you need to do is know how much water is being pushed out of the way, and the weight of the water that's being pushed out of the way is, is equal exactly to the force of upthrust. Okay, so let's write that as well. So it's equal, upthrust is equal exactly to the weight of the liquid that is displaced. Okay, so if you've got some water and you put a balloon or a ball in that water, it's going to push some of that water out of the way. The weight of the water that's been pushed out of the way is going to equal upthrust. Okay, you also need to know that if the density of the object is less than the density of the liquid that it's in, then that object will float. If the density is the same as the liquid it's in, it will remain in an equilibrium state. It will sort of be fully submerged, but it won't completely sink. Uh, if, if the density of the object is more than the density of the liquid that it's in, then it will sink to the bottom. Okay. Um, now, we also need to talk about atmospheric pressure and how it varies with height. So, you know that if you are in a fluid, then the higher up you go, the less fluid there is above you. Okay. So, the higher you go, the lower the pressure. Yeah. Likewise, uh, the density is going to decrease the higher up you go. The density of the atmosphere is lower the higher up you go. So that effect is also going to take uh, take hold. So if you have a look at the graph of atmospheric pressure versus height, it starts off really high when you're really low down. Um, so the atmospheric pressure is high, but then as you get higher and higher, the pressure goes down, but then it, t it takes this curved shape. And this curved shape is also due to the fact that the density of air is decreasing the higher up you go as well. The density of the atmosphere will, will decrease, which also contributes to atmospheric pressure. Right, um, I will see you in the next video.